Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Daily Defender. Great to be with everybody again. Um, first, I have to say thank you to everybody out there and all the views. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'm glad everybody's really liking the content. That means a lot to us. So I uh, really, really appreciate that. Uh, our normal admin, though, we still need more subscribers. It's really important for the channel. That's how it kind of gets its its elevation so we can keep doing different things and coming up with new concepts. So please subscribe, please hit the bell. But again, really, really appreciate the views. And we'd still like to hear a lot more comments as well. So we can kind of take those comments and, and wrap them back up for you and, and uh, bring kind of secondary and tertiary content on a, on a particular topic. Um, so, and the usual admin, uh, my face is blurred uh, strictly because of uh, my day job and protecting my identity so I can um, have my views and, and my points of view on my channel. So with that out of the way, I'm uh, going to have a little fun today. Oh, and before we forget, uh, I am wearing a Black Rifle Coffee t-shirt and uh, I, no one has contacted me from Black Rifle Coffee. I, um, I, I haven't been given anything. I just had never actually tried their coffee uh, and happened to be in uh, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee and had a, had a shop there, a standalone store and went in and people were super nice and uh, bought a few things and, and got to try the coffee and uh, my wife and I really liked it. And so uh, just, yeah, just a, a quick shout out to the Black Rifle Coffee folks. Uh, super nice people, great product, um, no endorsement from them. I'm just, as a consumer, I'm telling you who likes coffee. It was very good. So um, at any rate, um, I, just, I just realized I had my Black Rifle Coffee t-shirt on, so I thought I should make a comment on that. But Today, um, our intro is about, uh, we're going to have a little fun today. Uh, intro, we've got a, uh, an old Smith & Wesson and we've, and we've got a lemon. And uh, some of you probably already realize maybe why that is. But this is a, um, and of course, this is an unloaded firearm. This is a uh, early 1900s, uh, 32 safety hammerless top break. And um, I've been kind of interested in these in these uh, top break and some of the other earlier Smith and Wessons. I think I maybe I mentioned it in my other video uh, with the um, 38 uh, regulation police that I'd actually kind of was looking for a hand ejector and you know in the true sense of the in the word, but the regulation police was there and it was kind of a really nice piece and all that. Um, the same kind of held true for these really early Smith and Wessons. I wanted something. Uh, once again, this one didn't fit the exact criteria. I was really looking for something in the in the 1800s, um, and and this one certainly harks back to the 1800s in its design. But as a top rake in a very early 1900s version, uh, it still kind of fit that bill, and and it was it was very inexpensive, and uh, so I thought the. I would acquire it and bring it to the channel so we can all we can kind of all uh, see it, learn it, and, and enjoy it. So, uh, yeah. Without any uh, further uh, further delay, let's uh, let's get into this uh, the Smith and Wesson top break. Right. So as I just introduced, we have a lemon squeezer, and we have our lemon. And so yeah, it's this is a fun little connection to this gun. And if you're if you're not familiar or don't have any idea why I have a lemon on the table. It's because this particular firearm, uh, which is unloaded, by the way, we have an unloaded firearm, uh, clear firearm. This particular firearm, its nickname was the Lemon Squeezer. And before we get into that, it's, it's, its actual name, the actual Smith & Wesson name is the 32 Safety Hammerless. And that refers to the caliber, that refers to the hammerless design and it refers to the grip safety and we'll get into all that in a minute but it's it's nickname was the lemon squeezer and i actually found two different descriptions of that i found that one was stating that the lemon squeezer term came from this function here where you can kind of see this this uh, upwards and then downwards motion mimicking maybe some type of lemon squeezer the other notation is the a uh, gun has, well, it has the grip safety and the lemon squeezer name came from the fact that when you were squeezing the grip with the, uh, with the, uh, with the grip safety, it was like squeezing a lemon. I don't know which one's true and I'm not sure if anybody really knows anymore. I think generally the latter uh, is, the, is the, the preferred story, I guess, if you will, that the, the grip safety is the reason for the the lemon squeezer nickname. So at any rate, I just found that 
cool and fascinating. And of course, just another one of these amazing little Smith and Wesson history connection pieces, you know, or, or knowledge attached to a Smith and Wesson firearm. So, but uh, but to get in the firearm itself, this is like I said, its official name was a 32 safety hammerless. And these were first produced and introduced in 1887. And as I kind of mentioned in the in the intro, once again, my original criteria of, of looking for an older 1800s uh, Smith and Wesson, and I wasn't sure if it was going to be a tip up or a or a top break like this one uh, this one is. But um, I walked into the shop and and the price was right and. It, it the top break was cool. And then as, as I kind of learned more about it, the shop owner was telling me all of these features and the story with this particular firearm are really important because, you know, the hammerless design and the grip safety go on into other Smith & Wesson firearms you know, 40, 50, 60 years down, down the road. And so this, this really, this, this firearm is really groundbreaking. And we're talking about a time frame of the late 1800s. And you know, also what was going on in the late 1800s? We're talking about, um, you know, people probably still using oil lamps, you know, maybe luckily having a, an arc light. I guess in the early 1900s, you had light bulbs, but still the, the, the design concept of this, when you're thinking about 1887 and where it would have been built and how Daniel B. Wesson would have built this and why, and we'll get into that too, I just find amazing, right? And and the fact that this gun is is over a, over a hundred years old is just just really neat. So, yeah, what else about this gun? This gun has so much history and 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 talking points. I have to kind of remember where I'm going with it. But the, as I said, the name is 32 Safety Hammerless. It's a 32 caliber. They were also made in 38 Smith and Wesson. Certainly not. 38 special, but 38 Smith and Wesson. And this design, this, this, this hammerless safety design, as the story or legend goes, was put into place or, or was designed because uh, Daniel B. Wesson had become aware of a child that had either been hurt or killed. Again, I, I think the story is, is probably a little too old to know for sure, but and I believe it was with another Smith and Wesson firearm. And he took that to heart and thought, you know, I can build a, a safer firearm. And so he goes forward and, and produces um, not only the top brake, uh, because prior to this would have been the tip-ups, the top brake was definitely considered more robust and, a, and, a, and an advancement forward for sure. But he takes and he designs uh, a hammerless system. So the hammer is inside the frame, right? There's there's no exposed hammer. And he has a safety built into the grip. And the concept or story goes that the, the functionality, or again, the concept was that a child's hand could not be big enough, long enough to, and strong enough to depress the safety lever uh, in the grip and also pull a double action only trigger. And that was the concept. Um, and it is a double action only, obviously, because you, you don't have a hammer. And a secondary, I don't know if it was intended or un, in, unintended uh, aspect of the, of the hammerless was that it now became very snag free if it was being concealed right in a, in a, in a pocket or a jacket pocket or a vest pocket that, you know, certainly people would have been wearing back in the late 1800s. So just all these really neat features to the, to the pistol. And then those features, the, the grip safety and the, the hammerless design find their way into other Smith and Wesson firearms, you know, 40, 50 years later. And, um, you know, with the, the Model 40 Sentinel, which, which had the, the grip safety and, of course, all of the J-frames uh, that we know and, and see that, that don't have a hammer, that have a concealed hammer and the, all of that. So you, you, this, this firearm has some really important history in its, in its lineage and it's linked to other Smith & Wesson firearms that were, that were very important and very iconic. So, you know, very, very very interesting firearm. And that's what caught my attention. It didn't fit my original criteria of maybe something around 1870, but all the other 
historical parts and story parts to it, I thought were, were really, really neat. So, and again, I just hark back to, you know, when they were designing these things and what was happening in 1800. And, you know, it's just, it's just really cool. So that's kind of the history side of it. And I, I hopefully I got most of the points, maybe a few of them will, you know, maybe I've missed a few or some of them will come back to me, but that's the lemon squeezer connection, the, the grip safety connection and the, and the hammerless, hammerless double action only connection. The pistol itself, as we're looking at it, again, these were made from about 1902 to 1909. So not, not, uh, not an extraordinary, a uh, long, long time, but, um, and this particular model is in, um, based on the serial number, I should say, is probably right around 1908 or so, maybe 1907. I don't think 1909. So more of 1907, 1908. And they basically made, Smith & Wesson made three versions, if you will. The first version was called a, a first model. Then there was a second model. And then there was a third model. This one is a second model. And I know that for two reasons. One, the serial number gives it away. But the second model also had the stamping in the on the left side of the barrel and the stamping reads and i don't know if that really is going to uh come in here on the on the video but it reads um 32 smith and wesson ctg and ctg as we know is cartridge so it's a 32 smith and wesson cartridge and a smith and wesson product and so that's how i know it's a, a model two and these came in um, basically three and three and a half uh, inch barrels. I believe there was a two and I believe there was a six, but they were nowhere near um, as popular or produced as much as I understand it as the three or three and a half. And I honestly, I didn't me measure this one. I'm not sure which one it is. I think it's just a, uh, I think it's a three and a half, but um, those were the, the, the barrel lengths. Um, we already said it's a 32 Smith and Wesson caliber, and these are, you know, they didn't have the frame letters yet, the frame designations. I mean, this is a very small firearm, right? Uh, and so this was based off of the model one and a half. And, you know, if you know a little bit more about Smith and Wesson history, deeper uh, into the 1800s or earlier into the 1800s, they had a model one and a model one and a half, et cetera. And so this is the frame that's what's considered the frame size for the 32 Smith and Wesson is a model one and a half. And those were made, uh, the one and a halfs were made from like 1865 to 1890 or something like that, early 1890s, 92 or something like that. And then they just happened to carry that one and a half inch frame into this safety, uh, safety hammerless. What else can I tell you about it? Again, it's, it's double action only. It's a five shot and it's, it's unique. Obviously we have a top break, which we've just described or talked about. Uh, you'd have five shots of 38 Smith and Wesson, and it's unique, right? As you're as you're opening the the firearm in the top rake fashion, um, the uh, the ejector or extractor is 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 going to be pulling up the the spent shell casings, which is which is pretty neat. And these were, and maybe I said it already, but these these basically replaced the tip ups, right? The tip ups were before this, and this is a top rake, and it was considered these were considered more robust than the than the top rake. I'm sorry, more robust than the tip-up. And so it, it, uh, it had design features, it, it had design advancement uh, beyond what we just talked about with some of the, the really unique features. This one's nickel finish. Um, it's actually the very first nickel gun I've ever owned. I, it's almost always been blue for me or some stainless steel. This is the very first uh, nickel finish uh, that I've owned. And I, the, the, the firearm is in, is in solid condition. I mean, I talked to the shop owner, we both agreed, probably not something we'd want to fire. Although it seems mechanically correct and sound, um, the, the nickel finish, I think for a hundred plus year old gun is very good. We have some wear here around one of the side screws or plate screws. We have some, some pitting up here, but really the firearm overall is in good condition. The stocks were these plastic checkered stocks and you can see mine are broken and chipped. And what I understand is this was extremely common that, the, that this was part of the problem with these stocks. That um, that they they chipped and broke very easily, and, and ironically, this this firearm seems to have that same um, 
same indicators. And, and it's, it's also interesting when I looked in the shop, it, it, it's so old, the edges are just worn smooth. I mean, it's, it's been like this for so long uh, that, that uh, there's no sharp edges on the, on the break of the, of the, of the stock. So I, I thought that was pretty, pretty interesting. Um, it has a pinned, and I don't think you can see it. Maybe this side's better. Um, sorry, I'll try to get that in there. Um, a pinned, a pinned front sight, and um, it's got a pretty, pretty high blade on it. It does have a rear sight, believe it or not. This small, minuscule little V, uh, part of the top brake, uh, is the rear sight, believe it or not. So that was pretty interesting. So it does have a front and rear sight, and let's see, what else can I tell you about it? That's that's I think the the main points of uh, of the firearm that I really wanted to talk about it for me it just had some amazing history to it some features that were you know very um, you know early for their time very advanced for their time and then like I said find their way onto other firearms and I'll try to bring a couple of those firearms to the channel I'll I'll try to acquire a uh, a model 40 sentinel that has the you know kind of the j frame style uh five shot 38 special with the with the grip adapter or the grip the grip safety and of course you know we see the the hammerless design all the time right in in our in the j frames and and you know the current production uh j frames uh, and uh, i'll i'll bring some of those out as well we'll do another video we'll do a bit more of a side by side uh, with these, and of course, I had already done the video on the um, on my regulation police, and of course, that that firearm is um, is uh, empty as well. Uh, and of course, the hand ejector was what replaced uh, what what replaced this firearm, um, and not not too many years after this. So, um, and but th these were uh, this style, not not this model, I don't believe, but I believe the style. The, was actually produced up until about 1940. So they, they continued to produce a version of the top brake, I think, until 1940. I'll do a little bit more research on that and, and put that into the, uh, into, the, uh, into the video for you when I edit it. But I believe that's, that's the main points about this particular Smith & Wesson, this 32 uh, safety hammerless, again, known as the lemon squeezer. And uh, it's just a really, really neat piece of Smith & Wesson history. And uh, I love that. And I love the linkage then forward, you know, kind of foreshadowing forward to other firearms that, that Smith & Wesson made with, with a number of these features. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for all the views. Really appreciate it. We could use a, a, a more subscribers. And I would really like more comments. Uh, we'd really like to do more interaction with you all. And and again, do some secondary and tertiary videos based on comments and maybe what other people want to know or, or compare with these firearms. And we'll do our best to do that. So, but uh, thank you again for all of the, all the views. And um, again, I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you all again on another video at the Daily Defender.